Hello, this is Jenny Brandt with Unleash Your God-Given Healing. We're going to look again today at plastics and how to understand the resin identification code to protect your health. You see, this code is found on the bottom of most plastic containers. It's a number inside a triangle ranging from one to seven. You may have never noticed this code, as I didn't until recently, but I do urge you to take notice of these numbers. This number represents a resin identification code associated with the type of plastic material. Some plastics are more toxic than others. Some are more environmentally friendly, and some are easier to recycle than others. Understanding the resin identification code can help you to recycle, protect the environment, and protect your own health, which is very important. Let's look at the seven categories. The first one is called PET. It's a number one, and it stands for polyethylene terephthalate. It's one of the most commonly used plastics found in most water bottles, in sodas, in juice, and general packaging. The pet plastic can be recycled, and it is intended for single use only because repeated use increases both leaching and bacterial growth. Pet must be stored in a cool environment to prevent the leaching. Let me show you some examples. This is a Chick-fil-A lemonade bottle, and it is literally a number one. This is a mustard storage bottle. It's a number one. And then here's a typical plastic cup, a number one. Now, again, we gotta be careful with these, but they're not too bad. Number two is called HDPE, which stands for high density polyethylene. It's a sturdy plastic used in producing the basic milk jugs, toys, detergent and cleaning agent containers, even shampoo and liquid soap containers, cereal box liners, and some plastic bags. It does not break down under sun exposure, which is good, or from extreme heat or freezing. But it is one of the safest forms of plastic, and it can be recycled. Here are some examples again. Here's my laundry detergent, that's a number two. Here is a soap container, number two. And here is another soap liquid container. So all of these, again, are a number two. In going through my home, what did I find? I have many ones and many twos, and the ones and twos are not so bad. Then there's number three. PVC or polyvinyl chloride. It's a soft and flexible plastic used to make food wrap, cooking bottles, teething rings, that's concerning, children's toys, hmm, pets' toys, garden hoses, bubble wrap, and plumbing parts. It's called the poison plastic because it contains many toxins, such as phthalates, which are used as a softener. But as I mentioned in an earlier video, these phthalates are also hormone disruptors. So sorry moms, we must be careful about these number threes. These chemicals have disrupted the endocrine systems of wildlife, causing testicular cancer and infertility. And there are scientists who believe they are responsible for similar adverse effects in humans too. Therefore, PVC should not be used for eating, drinking, or used with children, really, or pets, and it's generally not recyclable. I found only one example in my home, and it's this PVC pipe. I use it outside with our sprinkler system, and inside it connects our drains to our plumbing system and our septic tank. Copper and steel are what is used to bring water into our home, and that's a good thing. So this one is toxic, contains EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, and is not recyclable. 
All right, number four. Number four is LDPE or low density polyethylene. It's tough, but lightweight, heat resistant, which helps, and it's typically used to make grocery bags, dry cleaning bags, some food wraps, some squeezable bottles, and bread bags. Although it's considered relatively safe plastic, it is not recyclable. And I looked on my Dave's bread, and sure enough, it's this number. Some Tupperware today, since 2010, is made from this. But the only sample I could find in my home was my bread bag. So again, relatively safe, lightweight, heat resistant, but not recyclable. All right, next one on the list is number five called PP, which stands for polypropylene, and it's tough, lightweight, and used to package yogurt and margarine containers, medicine bottles, a lot of these prescriptions, disposable diapers, straws, packing tape, and eating utensils. Although labeled microwave safe, uh, think again, it's not advisable to ever eat any food microwaved in any plastic container. Just ask John Hopkins about that. If you use a microwave, it's always best to use ceramic or glass. This plastic is not recyclable. Number five is not. And again, Tupperware makes some of their things since 2010 with this plastic. So here are two examples. This storage container and then this Rubbermaid container that I can't find the top two. But they're reasonably safe, but we don't want to microwave in any container. And they are recyclable. Number six, polystyrene or styrofoam, used to make disposable drinking cups, food containers, egg cartons, foam packaging, and some eating utensils. Beware. <laughs> Evidence clearly shows these plastics leach toxic chemicals, especially when heated. It's difficult to recycle these products as well and they take hundreds of years to decompose. So you've all seen these. We've all had a drink from one of these. I don't drink from these anymore, especially a hot drink. It's just not a good idea. But I will tell you that Starbucks and Chick-fil-A and maybe a few other places give you coffee that's in paper cups because of the heat, and that's a good thing. So you won't taste the styrofoam, but it's more than just tasting it. It's about toxic chemicals too. So here's a suggestion. If you go to a restaurant and this is what they give you, and it's a cold drink, you can say, oh, you have paper cups for your hot drinks. Would you please put my cold drink in one of those? Where there's a will, there's a way. And I look now at all of the times that I have people over to the house and I use paper cups and paper things. And you know, I don't use that anymore. I use my glass and my real plates and my real stainless steel. All right, number seven, the last one, is a category for other plastics like BPA and polycarbonate. And a particular concern is those plastics packaged in the polycarbonate, which uses BPA, because as we discussed in a previous video, it's a xenoestrogen and known endocrine disruptor. These plastics are used to make baby and water bottles, believe it or not, sippy cups, water cooler bottles, medical and dental devices, CDs, DVDs, and some computer parts. BPA is linked to obesity, cancer, and again, endocrine issues. So here's all I could find in my home, and it does say no BPA. So it falls in the other category, but no BPA and that is good. So interestingly, there's a mnemonic device that helps you to remember which plastics are safe and which are not. And it goes like this. One, two, four, five, helps you stay alive. Three, six, seven, you might go to heaven. <laughs> so what they're saying is a best to avoid three, six, and seven, because you know when you're eating, drinking, or being used with children and pets in any way, because they only get you to heaven, not quickly, but sooner. Three and six are due to the poisons they leach, which are intensified 
when heated. Seven is due to the chemical BPA if it happens to be found in that plastic, which is a known hormone disruptor. According to Dr. Joseph Mercola, one study indicated that 95% of all plastic products were positive for some kind of estrogenic activity. This means they can potentially disrupt your hormones. This poses risk to both children and adults. How's that for finding estrogen in unexpected places? Remember my previous video on we live in an estrogen world. It will be posted in the show notes below and you won't want to miss seeing this. Well, here's more evidence for that. So technically, it's best not to drink or eat from any plastic. Plastics are here to stay. Don't kid yourself. We live in a plastic world, and we've also learned that we live in an estrogen world. These plastics help us in many ways, but they are finding their way into our environment, and most importantly, into our bodies. So we must be careful. It's not an overnight thing. It's an accumulation in our bodies over time that has biological consequences. And now there's new evidence leaking plastics to brain function too. So we must reduce the plastics we use and avoid some that pose risk to our health. This is what I would advise you to do. Go through your home and start reading what the plastics are and look and see what number they are. Look back on this video and don't eat from plastics. Don't drink hot drinks from styrofoam cups. That's probably the worst thing you can do. Do what you can to keep yourself and your family and your children safe. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and share this video and click the notification bell so you will know when I post new information. Until then, here's to your good health.